On this week's episode of the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast, we're going to have a tribute to a special Valentine's Week edition, Love and Money, the perfect blend. So this is your host, Brent Bowden. I'm a certified financial planner. And in this episode 38, we are going to be unraveling the secrets to balancing love and money in your relationships. From understanding the financial love languages to practical tools that can revolutionize your approach. So this episode is going to be your guide to harmonious financial journey with your significant other. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about some real stories, some actionable tips, and tools that will help you transform that financial love story. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast, where we discuss the financial challenges and opportunities facing medical professionals. In this podcast, we'll discuss a variety of financial topics that are important to physicians, such as retirement planning, investing, and estate planning. We'll also interview experts in the financial services industry to get their insights on these topics. If you're a physician or a spouse of a physician, I encourage you to listen to this podcast. We will provide you with the information you need to make sense down financial decisions and achieve your financial goals. Here's your host, Brent Bowden, a financial coach and certified financial planning advisor with over 15 years of experience helping medical professionals achieve their financial goals. To learn more about Brent Bowden and his services, visit brentbowden.com. Hello and welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup. I'm your host, Brent Bowden, and today we are going to explore a topic that's not just about the dollars and cents, but the heart and soul of your relationship, love and money. So whether you're happily dating or married, we've got thoughtful ideas that can enhance that connection and your financial harmony. Let's get started. So one of the things I love about talking about this topic is love and money go together very well uh, if you're doing it right. They can be a big problem if you're not. And so one of the places I always like to start is love languages. You've probably heard of love languages. Uh, The book by Gary Chapman is fantastic. If you haven't read it, would highly recommend it. Um, But did you know that there's also some financial love languages? So from a saver partnered with a spender or two different savers trying to navigate joint financial goals, just understanding how those dynamics work over time can significantly impact your relationship. And so the five love languages, just as a refresher, kind of broken down for you, are quality time, words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Those can play into your money habits as well. And typically a person has one or two of those, a primary and secondary love language. But financial love languages refer to the the way that person expresses or receives love through money. So let's dig a little deeper into a few of those. So you may have heard of a similar type of personality to a driver. A driver is somebody who equates money to success, though. And so having money is going to help protect them against the fear of incompetence. The more money they have, typically the more successful they feel, more competent that they feel. Now, that can also be an overly dependent feature on money. And if they don't have it or are having issues, there can be self-esteem issues. And so that driver personality really goes back to how they equate money, success, and ultimately love with that. Now, our analytics, second type, are people who tend to view money as a source of security. They protect them from life's difficulties. And so they tend to be pretty structured and organized in their approach to money. Uh, They're also probably our most likely to establish a budget and stick to it. The the weakness, obviously, of an analytic is that they tend to be a little unyielding and maybe legalistic when they look at their their budgeting and money issues. They really drill down typically to to the penny uh, and, and really don't like to go outside of that budget until they feel like they have that safety net built there. Now, our our third type that we're going to talk about is amiables. So the relationships and and people that are amiable tend to focus on their financial desires. To them, money might mean love and affection. And so the lack of money may translate into the inability to demonstrate love to others. So obviously, our amiables is kind of that third category that we're looking at. 
The last one I like to go over is the expressive. So to an expressive, money is acceptance. It purchases them the respect and the admiration of others. Uh, it may provide them the basis of relationships with desirable people. Now, that can also be turned into a negative way to help hide feelings of pain or insecurity or incompetence. And so no matter what your love language is, your financial love language is also important in, in understanding who you're partnered with and, and how they deal with money issues and, and how that affects them, even from a day-to-day -day basis. Now, it's difficult to maybe always talk about these, and sometimes I can get into some issues, but we're going to throw out a tip for each one of these topics today. Just take it uh, with a grain of salt. It's just an idea to share and be able to, to listen to your partner about exactly how they feel about money and how that may affect your relationship. And so tip on this is just to, to set up a, a date night stroll, just to kind of listen and learn, walk in the park, and ask about some of the money situations with your partner. Uh, share maybe what your love language is, and then talk about your financial love language. How do you look at money uh, from a short-term and long-term approach, and how does that make you feel when you have the right resources in place? By knowing that and understanding, it, it can certainly help you to create a, a better relationship with your partner over the long term. Now, the second that I want to talk about is what I call the money date night. So nobody likes to talk about budgeting, although it is something that is very important, especially as you're getting established. And budgets change over time. Uh, as you get a little older, maybe you're more secure in your, your financial situation, but budgets are going to change again when you retire. And so this is always something that's nice to be able to revisit. And why not make it fun? Make it a, a collaborative joint experience with your partner. Share goals. We talked about resetting at the beginning of the year. We're now you know, six weeks in and maybe your goals have shifted. Something has changed in your, your life that you want to be able to, to take into account for 2024. And so coming up with a, a new budget or some budgetary guidance together actually can be kind of fun and strengthen that relationship. Maybe it's planning for some short-term or long-term goals that you have. Big vacation, uh, new home, you know, new car, whatever those things might be. It can also help deepen that um, relationship by understanding whose priorities uh, and what those might be and so that you can, can better attain them together. A lot easier to get there uh, jointly than it is trying to do individual goals. So create this money date situation. You know, pick a cozy spot, maybe at home, maybe out, maybe at a park, bring some snacks, and then get into a routine of doing that. You know, every three to six months, make sure that you're making that money date just to catch up and see exactly where you both are. Now, the next one uh, I always like to do at the beginning of the year, but if you haven't done it already, take advantage of a financial goals vision board. Visualizing dreams together can be both a powerful bonding experience with your partner, but it can also help you understand where you, you want to go. So whether you collect some images or some quotes uh, or do it digitally these days, you know, whether it's going to be buying a new home, traveling, uh, funding education, saving more for retirement, you know, getting your estate plan done, whatever those things might be, just create and align your dreams together. Keep them at the forefront of your mind and Make a, a list on how to get those done. You know, maybe something you want to set an evening and just be able to talk through, kind of discuss those and share what the meaning behind each one of those goals might be. By doing that, you're going to bring yourselves closer together. You're going to understand better. And again, jointly work toward things can help a lot. Now, you may be in the opposite situation where you're facing some financial challenges. Those can be pretty stressful. And there's nothing more satisfying than being able to tackle those together with somebody that you trust. And how that can bring you together can be a significant game changer in the long term. So whether it's something that you're paying off debt, uh, facing layoffs, saving maybe for a big purchase that feels a little bit out of uh, your capability right now, just consider turning that into a, a team effort. 
So maybe you want to set monthly challenges or yearly challenges, but make sure you celebrate whatever those small victories are along the way. It's a great way to continue to build some trust and resilience in your relationship. And so what I would recommend is come up with what those challenges are and how are you going to approach them? Create a little challenge between you and your spouse uh, or significant other and make a reward for them. So maybe an example could be um, if you're trying to reach for a savings goal that could be for a vacation or maybe it's just a weekend getaway. You know, setting that goal, knowing how much to put away over three to six months and being able to actually go enjoy that trip could be one fantastic way to do it. Now, maybe you have an outsized goal, like saving for a down payment for a home. And that feels like that's going to be a daunting task. It's going to take a couple of years to get there. Well, if you can set a good timeline for what that looks like, maybe you're trying to save, for example, $100,000 over the next two and a half years. Well, if you break that down, then that's $25,000 basically every kind of you know six to eight months. Well, maybe in between each one of those, if you're hitting that $25,000 goal, then go to dinner, go have an evening out, or put the kids to bed and watch a movie at home with a, a drink and popcorn. Whatever that is, just having little rewards attached to it actually helps you mentally get there even faster and be dedicated to making those goals pay off. Now, the next one I think doing together is always helpful is understanding your financial gaps in, from an education standpoint. You know, knowledge is power. And when you put knowledge together with the love of your significant other and spouse, you, know, you really can help achieve anything. So if there are topics that you all want to learn more about, is just scheduling some nights where you may discuss various topics. Maybe it's uh, actually attending a workshop or an online course, you know, reading a financial book or binge watching some YouTube videos about that topic. You know, just learning and sharing that together can be an entertaining and enlightening uh, journey for both of you. So pick a couple topics, you know, go over those, you know, periodically once a month. And it could be investing, budgeting hacks planning for your retirement, uh, tax saving strategies, you know, whatever those might be. Doing them together, though, so you're both getting that same information and being able to, to understand it, digest it, and talk about it really can help build your relationship. Now, uh, I love gifting. It's something I've always enjoyed, kind of one of my love languages. Um, and so being able to make surprise financial gestures uh, is also something that I love and kind of hits home. So why does a surprise always have to be just for somebody's birthday? You know, for example, maybe incorporate a surprise financial gesture into your relationship. It might be super simple just by, you know, adding a little bit extra to your shared savings goal or paying down a little bit more uh, when you were able to do a side job. And whatever that might be, just having that little bit of extra can can really go a long way to your thoughtfulness and really really reinforcing the commitment that you have to those shared goals. So another one could be a, a surprise date. Maybe it's out of the ordinary and you actually schedule it. You know, doesn't have to cost a lot. Could be getting some food and taking it to the park. But whatever that is, those thoughtful gestures really can be a, a significant game changer and build upon the relationship that you have already. So these are just a fun couple of things that uh, for this Valentine's week, you know, I always enjoy talking through uh, money situations. And I think that has made my relationship with my wife so much better. It's taken time and it wasn't as good when we first started dating as it is today. Uh, and we've been together for a long time and I have room for improvement uh, just as, as probably we all do. But I think Keeping the point that your relationship depends both on the love that you have with your spouse as well as your means to be able to, to get there can make a huge difference in the long term. And remember, it's not always just about the numbers. 
It's really about that financial journey. How are you going to strengthen the relationship on the way so that you have the love and money that you want and reach your goals on time? So if you've liked these love and money tips, please share them. Uh, And if you've got questions about any of those, feel free to shoot us an email. But until next time, stay financially and romantically fit. Thanks for listening to the Physician's Financial Checkup podcast with me, your host, Brent Bowden, certified financial planner for over 15 years, helping physicians on their financial journey to financial freedom. If you like the actionable strategies and tips that we've shared here on the podcast, subscribe now. And for even more guidance, you can pick up the Physician's Financial Checkup book, available now in print, ebook, and audiobook. Look forward to helping you on your journey to financial freedom. Thank you for listening to the Physician Financial Checkup Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite platform and leave a review. You can also find more information on brentbowden.com. The information contained in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as financial advice. The opinions expressed are solely those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of any other individual or organization. You should carefully consider your investment objectives, risk tolerance, and time horizon before making any investment decisions. If you are seeking financial advice, you should consult with a qualified financial advisor who can assess your individual circumstances and needs.